It's been two years now with the PS5, and the games continue to impress on the next generation. Whether it's a game built from the ground up for the new hardware, or one that plays best on the advanced architecture, there's plenty of amazing experiences to be had. I've been meaning to update my list of the best PS5 games for over a year now, so the time has finally come. As more and more bangers are released, my list for the best games continues to change. There's a whole lot of great stuff here, and it's only getting better. So, what have we got this time? With a bunch of new games, and some tinkering around with the order of previous entries, it's a whole new ball game. This list was compiled after plenty of time, energy, and thought, and represents what I believe to be the very best that the PS5 has to offer. So, without further ado, the top 25 best PS5 games, new and improved. Strive is the first Guilty Gear game I have ever played. That being said, I am absolutely in love with this game and now the franchise because of it. This past generation saw fighting games really raise the bar in quality. Games like Mortal Kombat 11 and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate thrived, while others, <coughs> Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, did not. Going then into the next generation, it's definitely a tough act to follow, but Guilty Gear Strive absolutely nails it in every single way. Where frames are king, the animations feel oh so fluid and crisp in the 2.5D fighter, as well as an expansive roster of unique and varied characters, something difficult to achieve nowadays. If you're looking for the best fighting game for your new console, it is absolutely without a doubt this one. In my humble opinion, the Neo games are the best Souls games that aren't made by From Software. In the Neo Collection, you get both amazing games at their absolute best on PS5. If you haven't played either of these games yet, you absolutely need to, but even if you have, if you really enjoyed them, I would strongly encourage you to check these out. Included is all the DLC, as well as the graphical and performative enhancements you would expect out of a release like this. If you're looking for a brutal escape, there are few quite like the Neo Brothers. I know no one calls them that, but it felt right. Get it trending, folks. On my list of the top 25 best modern PC games, I listed Disco Elysium as number 19. It bested the likes of Undertale and Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I have a lot of love for this game, and because of it, I'm overwhelmingly happy to play it on PS5 now. The biggest hurdle this game had to hop over to get this game to console was the dialogue. This is a game with very, very, very heavy amounts of text, and that can get cumbersome on a TV very quickly. With the final cut, everything is now voice acted, very well I might add, as well as new story content, all so that the game is much more suited for the port. It's one of the best RPGs ever made, and I love it with all my heart. The Yakuza franchise can sometimes be a daunting one. They're narrative-driven games that have really in-depth and intriguing stories. While Like a Dragon is an acceptable starting point, if you want a true low-risk way to try out the formula, play Judgment. This spin-off of the Ryu Gakutoku hit franchise, Judgment takes everything good about the Yakuza franchise and puts it in a nice simple package. If you like beat-em-ups, Japanese mafias, great stories, or any combination of the three, you'll certainly enjoy yourself here. Guardians of the Galaxy has evolved from a B-tier Marvel Comics team to one of the most beloved superhero teams in the world, in no small part thanks to director James Gunn's efforts on the big screen. But Eidos Montreal has taken the team to new heights with their wonderful action-adventure game. One part Mass Effect, another part Tomb Raider, Guardians beautifully blends staples of the genre with some of the best narrative the PS5 has seen yet, alongside wonderful characters now well known in Marvel lore, as well as intriguing roles yet to be brought out in the limelight. Square Enix has truly found something special here, and I hope this isn't the last we've seen of these Guardians, even if the developer is now owned by an entirely different company. But let's not talk about that. Forbidden West boasts one of the best open worlds on the PS5, if not all of gaming. They also took the combat from Zero Dawn and completely overhauled it, particularly concerning its stellar bow gameplay. Running around post-apocalyptic America, taking down machines and flesh alike, has never felt as good as it does here. There's a gripping story to boot, taking Ashley Birch's phenomenal performance as Aloy in a new quest to stop an enemy threatening intertribal war. It's also great to see Aloy's development from the first game. While a lot of sequels fall into the trap of resetting a character's social or skill progress, Aloy in Forbidden West feels like an established legend more so than an up-and-coming warrior, and it's refreshing to see. For a fantastic western RPG, look no further. I feel like Destiny 2's latest expansion went a bit under the radar, as those outside of the current Destiny ecosystem paid little mind to it. But believe me when I say, there hasn't been a better time to jump into Bungie's live service shooter. 
Not only does the expansion provide the usual new campaign, and a fantastic one at that, they've also made massive improvements to the endgame, providing much more content to play or replay, and making rewards for doing so much more worthwhile. Destiny 2 may be passing the 5 year mark now, but she's still got plenty of life in her to come. What can I say about Persona 5 Royal that hasn't been said already? This one was admittedly a bit hard to nail down, as it just finally released on the system properly last month, but it is a great game to be sure. While its length is no small feat, it's obviously worth it for some of the best storytelling in modern day gaming. There's an absurd amount of content here, but none of it feels misplaced or thrown in. The amount of love and care brought into the game by developers Atlas is astounding to behold, and each and every one of its numerous systems is brought about in a natural way to avoid overstimulating or overwhelming the player. Persona 5 Royal is easily one of the best JRPGs around, and despite its length, one I would heavily recommend to those new to the genre. It's simply the best of the best. So, Resident Evil Village was my most anticipated game of 2021, hands down. I started playing it right at launch, and I did not stop until I rolled credits. It sucks that I've been so busy, because I think about it all the time. While the Resident Evil franchise has a bit of a problem tying itself together at the moment, Village does a phenomenal job mixing what everyone loved about Resident Evil 4 and 7, and creating a beautiful fantasy horror action experience that any fan of either will for sure enjoy. Just beware of House Beneviento. For God's sake, beware. Lost Judgment took the first game and did it one better, or for the sake of this list, six better. In short, the game is just exciting to play, either in its engaging narrative or addicting gameplay. Judgment felt like a bit of a test, whereas Lost Judgment takes things into a whole new dimension. It's great to see Ryu Gagatoku Studio thriving off both their main Yakuza franchise as well as this spin-off series, and hopefully neither go too far from our hands. I love the Stanley Parable. There's a reason why the game took gaming YouTube by storm back in the day. It's a surprisingly simple yet vastly complex game about, well, everything. Running around the office, exploring different paths and choices, it all yields something new and oftentimes profound. It's the type of roguelike-esque game where each and every run leaves you excited to see what new things you can discover. The Ultra Deluxe Edition adds even more content that absolutely lives up to the original. I won't say much beyond that because it's best you figure it out yourself, but I strongly encourage you to do so. It's Cat Game, Game of the Year 2022. Jokes aside, Stray is one of the best gaming experiences you can have on the PS5 simply because it's a great game. I don't think it really breaks the mold or moves the industry forward, but that's not the point. Sometimes you just want to roam a science fiction world as a cat. Blue 12 Studios was aware of this and crafted a compelling story in a wonderful world, all guided by our feline friend. And it's nice to be able to just turn down your brain, relax, and be a cat for a little while. Inscription is one of the many modern games proving that card games are freaking dope. It's another game that is better the less you know about it, but let me sum it up like this. It's a deck building roguelike that goes completely batshit crazy in terms of story, gameplay, and fun. It's cheap, it's addicting, and most importantly, it's on this list, so check it out. In terms of value and overall usage of what the PS5 has to offer over any other system, Demon Souls truly is a game to experience. Besides all of the insane improvements Bluepoint has made to the PS3 game, it's given it new life. Not to say that it was a flop originally, but so many diehard Souls fans had never played due to the viral sensation Dark Souls being the first Souls game to really break out into the mainstream. Bluepoint has revitalized the game, touching up every little aspect and getting rid of virtually any and every flaw. It's tough as nails, but fair. It's filled with fantastical character and level design, and it's just a flat out incredible experience from start to finish. Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate is an amazing, ambitious reimagining of a JRPG classic, now in its definitive home on PS5. The story of Final Fantasy VII ranks among the best of any game ever, and Square Enix somehow managed to make it even better here. There's a wealth of content to uncover, with a surprisingly low amount of fluff given how much they've stretched the story of the original game here. Then there's also the great Yuffie expansion to boot, only sweetening the deal. With modern gameplay infusions and some of the most stunning graphics on the system to date, any RPG fan absolutely has to play this game, no question. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, I'm obsessed with Devil May Cry. If you haven't taken my advice to get this game yet, I'm very disappointed in you, but I shall attempt to once again. You kill monsters with badassery, 
It's a perfect mix of skill-based challenges and cinematic action sequences to keep your adrenaline high. It's got new features and enhancements on PS5 that make it the best place to play. It has hot boys. In other words, it's a damn near perfect game. In the past, I called Demon's Souls the PS5's killer app. Now, it's most certainly Rift Apart. With some of the most solid gameplay the Ratchet & Clank franchise has ever seen, graphics plucked straight out of a modern Disney film, and a story so good that it brought me to tears, Rift Apart is one of the best games I've played in a very long time. Taking full advantage of the PS5, Rift Apart manages to succeed in adding an entirely new protagonist that feels right at home, even if she was 19 years late to the party. Everything about this game feels like it always should have been in the franchise, and I cannot wait to see where Insomniac takes these games next. In short, they're some of the best devs in the business, by a long shot. I'm positive that I wasn't the only one fairly worried about Tales of Arise after numerous delays and a pretty lackluster marketing rollout. It's almost as if the game was destined to be mediocre at best. But boy oh boy is it anything but. Featuring Tales' best story yet, Arise is one of the best JRPGs ever made. And yes, I know I just talked up Final Fantasy VII and Persona 5 Royal a lot, what can I say, PS5 got good shit. Taking everything they learned from past games, Arise nails every aspect. Plot, combat, gameplay systems, the works. There's also a ton of strategy involved, and something a lot of modern JRPGs have been missing. The devs also included a whopping 156 enemy types in the game, just one example of how much care and energy was put into making this game the best it could be. Plus, lightning fast loading times are just icing on the cake. The Legacy of Thieves Collection is a shining example on how to remaster a game for new hardware. While the rollout of said remasters coming not too soon after their originals can be put up for debate, there's no denying that these versions are the definitive ways to play Uncharted 4 at Thief's End and Uncharted The Lost Legacy. For people unaware, you could easily fool them into believing the games were made for PS5, judging by the fantastic job by Naughty Dog. Not to mention the fact that the Uncharted games are top tier to begin with. If you haven't given these games a shot by now, you absolutely should. Elden Ring at number 6? A blasphemy! I know, I know. Sue me. But trust me, these next five games are even better. That being said, Elden Ring is absolutely amazing and one of the best RPGs I have ever played. Honestly, everybody knows what this game is. I don't need to give it any credit. You already know. Uh, go get it. As far as Astro's Playroom goes, I still think every single person who owns a PS5 has to play this game. You have no reason not to. It's free, and it's already installed the second you turn on the console for the very first time. Not only is it a great way to test out your shiny new toys, but it's a masterpiece of a platformer in its own right, also including a ton of interesting PlayStation history encapsulating the past 25 plus years. Astro continues to shine anytime he appears, and I hope it's not too long before we see him come again. Now for my most anticipated game of 2022. Boy, I love God of War Ragnarok. Not only has it one-upped its predecessor in every conceivable way, but it's put so much content in place here that there's really nothing you could possibly complain about. Except yes, Atreus and Mimir will not let you take your time on puzzles. That's fair. There's so much of the game I can't talk about because of massive spoilers that riddle the game, even into the gameplay mechanics, but I can wholeheartedly tell you that this game is worth every penny, every minute, every morsel you have to give it until your death, which can have you when it earns it. It Takes Two is by far the best co-op game ever made. Throughout my time with the game, playing with my best friend, shout out to you, Bakel, mwah, the game constantly refreshed its gameplay, always giving us new toys and ways to work together and experience its incredible story. Everyone is lonely as hell right now. The world sucks. With It Takes Two, we have a way to connect with people in ways completely unique to the game. The main characters and a strange couple mistakenly transformed into dolls must figure out how to become human again, and along the way rediscover what brought them together in the first place. Love. And no, I don't want to hear anything about that being cheesy. We live in a world today where love is gross and feelings shouldn't be felt. That's wrong. You should embrace love. It's one of the best feelings in the world, and this game is a perfect example of that. Grab someone you care about or someone you want to grow closer with and play this game. Do I even need to say anything here? Is anyone surprised? 
It's probably more surprising that Hades isn't my number one pick, but I can't always give it all the glory. That's not to say it's completely undeserving of it. Hades is very much still one of my favorite games ever made. Now finally on PS5, there's no reason for PlayStation players to not play this absolute masterpiece of a game. Go play it. If you haven't yet, honestly, just stop the video here. Go. I'll wait. Endwalker is everything we could have possibly asked for out of Final Fantasy XIV. The game's fourth expansion, Endwalker wraps up the game's eight-year story and lays the path for the future, one I cannot be more excited for. Instead of being more honed in, Endwalker is more like the third act of Final Fantasy XIV's formative years. There's no slow moments, no slog, it's just in-your-face action, thrilling character moments, and answering all those questions fans have had for years. Couple that with some fantastic new environments, and it's wonderful to be old. Both the new classes, Sage and Reaper, also offer enticing new ways to play, and because of the game's easy job swapping mechanics, it's simple to switch and level up those new playstyles. Composer Masayoshi Soken delivers as well with some of his best work yet. For people who don't care about MMORPGs, I'm begging you, give Final Fantasy XIV a shot. Not only is it the best of its genre, but it's also the absolute best game on the PS5. And there you have it folks, those are my picks for the top 25 PS5 games. But looking ahead, there's a game coming to the platform as well as many others that I am very excited to announce. I am doing a worldwide giveaway for, and that is the Callisto Protocol. For those that don't know, the Callisto Protocol is an upcoming survival horror video game developed by Striking Distance Studios and published by Krafton, scheduled for release on December 2nd, and is directed by Glenn Schofield, who had previously co-created the Dead Space series. So, all of my survival horror fans know what I'm talking about when hype for this game is just unreal. So, in order to help out with that, I am doing a giveaway of the game, and just like previous giveaways that I've done on the channel, all you have to do is be subscribed to my Twitch channel, and you're automatically entered to win as soon as you pop into the stream. Right at launch, I will be doing a stream of the game. All you have to do is be subscribed, pop in, say you want entered at the giveaway, and at the very end of the stream, I will pick the winner through a random name generator, and we'll be all set to go. But like I said, it's worldwide, it's any platform of your choosing, PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, S, or PC, on your favorite platform, whatever you want, doesn't matter, I will get you a copy. And so, enter if that tickles your fancy and other than that thank you guys so much for watching like if you like this video subscribe if you want to see more do you agree with my picks did i snub anything or give something too much attention let me know i'd love to discuss it it was hard enough as it is to make the list and i know i left out some truly awesome games but what can i say I had to i had to narrow it down to 25 somehow but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.